This is how they find their bloodlines. This is how they find the children that they want to take under their wing. For let's say that nicely, but it's not. What's going on, Patriots? It's CG Patriot here, and this is Awake with Reason. Today is Wednesday, March 31st, 2021, and it's the day after Tuesday. If you're just joining us here, or joining me here, and you haven't subscribed yet, if you like this video, subscribe below. If you like this video, after you watch the video, hit that like button or share it with your friends. So I wanted to get into something today real quick. Actually, not real quick. My mind is blown, guys. I um, I went down a rabbit hole, of course. And the rabbit hole led me. I watched this show last night with this person, Jesse, and also the bishop. And I'm going to put that link in the description below. So I'm trying to wrap my head around how to unpack this with you guys it's crazy it is and i the, the craziest part about this is the last part i just found out all right so in the i'm, I'm, I'm imagining in the intro you're going to understand a little bit of it i'm going to probably put some of that teaser in the intro but let's start off with something real quick so the last part of this that i that i stumbled upon was the 17 post and that 17 post is 435, okay? And in 435, four, it says Yellow Brick Road, FI Speech History, Wizards and Warlocks, Alice in Wonderland, and then Solved. Okay, so the, the, the ones I want to really touch on here is Yellow Brick Road, Wizards and Warlocks, Alice in Wonderland, okay? So you're probably thinking, what does that have to do, CG Patriot, with anything? So I'll tell you, and I'm going to get into it. So I'm going to create probably, this is going to have to be a three-part series. There's just too much information to unpack. So while watching that video last night, I found out that there's this company called Epic, E-P-I-C. And I'm familiar with, the medical record industry again don't ask me why i am familiar with it so the medical record industry is has a 60 percent market ownership by this company called epic okay and epic is located in this nice little town let's get into it i'm going to go ahead and start sharing all right this understanding of, of this topic kind of gave me the chills a little bit because there's so much here to unpack so i'm going to try to get a little bit of done now and then let you guys ruminate on that do your own research and then i'm going to come back to it on episode two and three i'll give you the overview here all right so epic campus it's located in this little town called verona wisconsin it's one of the articles that came up Software company Epic has created one of the strangest and largest workplaces of all time, and it definitely is. So remember when I said, keep in mind, when I said Wizards and Warlocks, Alice in Wonderland, and Yellow Brick Road, okay? So to start off, they have a five-story underground 1,100-seat theater, Okay. It's a beautiful campus on the outside, you know, this is the campus here. 
and we can go through a few things here. So what you're going to notice, remember, wizards and the warlocks. So look at this. That's interesting, right? What kind of writing is that? This is their campus. Inside the wizard room. Okay. Nice. You know, it gets nice. It's, it is what it is. Goes through here. Ice cave. What's this right here, guys? Pentagram. Wizards and Warlocks, guys. It's got a Harry Potter theme to it. Okay. So let's get let's get into let's get into the Google Maps part. All right. So this is the place. Again, this place is located. Let me go back here. This is where it's located. Now look at some of these names here. So we've got the Great Hall, Milky Way, Epic Fortress, Observatory, Epic Library. They, by the way, they call this the Epic Galactic, Epic Galactic Headquarters. And you'll see a photo in just a second. So Epic Fortress, Deep Space Auditorium, Jabberwookie Parking, Yoda Parking Garage, Jules Verne. I mean, this entire place is the Epic Campus, and it basically encompasses the entire town. And what I want to talk about a little bit in the next episode is there's a church that's over here, and that church has a lot to do with what's going on here. Okay. So this place is massive, massive. All right. And let's take a look at these photos a little bit. So again, the background to this, this company is it is a software company that was started in, you know what, let me go ahead and go through the, through the epic thing. So, so Judy, Judy Faulkner is an American billionaire and the CEO and founder of Epic Systems, a healthcare software company located in Wisconsin. Faulkner founded Epic Systems in 1979 with the original name of Human Services Computing. In, two, in 2013, Forbes called her the most powerful woman in healthcare. And on the magazine's 2020 list of world's billionaires, she ranked 836. And as one of the wealthiest self-made women, she had a net worth of $5.5 billion. Okay. So it goes into the personal life and all that kind of stuff. But I want to talk to you about the epic story here and what they do. So again, Epic makes software. And this software basically is the, it's your medical record. Okay. And your medical record is now all digital for the most part. And they've been making this medical record digital for the past three or four years. So it's been a big headache for the majority of these systems to um, medical systems to make your medical record digital. So if you talk to any of your doctors, you'll say, hey, is my record digital now? And most likely it's with Epic. OK, and most likely the next thing will be if you ask them, was it a pain in the butt? They're going to say yes. So to to add all these physical records to this database. So. Remember when we talked about wizard and warlocks? Okay, so let's first things first here. And this is uh, again, this is Judy Faulkner. Let's talk about her again. Sorry, I'm bouncing around. Judy Faulkner founded America's leading medical record software company, Epic. Okay, in the basement, in the basement in 1979, where we heard the story before. Epic supports the medical records. You know, we blow this up. Epic supports the medical records of over 250 million patients and is used by top medical centers such as Johns Hopkins. We've heard about that before in Mayo Clinic. The company has never raised venture capital or made an acquisition. So they've never raised venture capital or made an acquisition and develops all its software in-house. Three things that stick out. It's never raised venture capital. 
where they get the money from. It's never made an acquisition and they've yet to ever go public. Okay. Now let's get into this third bullet point. Faulkner, and it seems again on the outside, it's going to be this you know beautiful ending to a beautiful story. But let me explain. Faulkner signed the giving pledge in 2015 and has agreed to eventually give 99% of her stake in Epic to a private charitable foundation. Where have we heard this before, guys? Bill Gates, right? So the thing is with, with these top level satanic soldiers, you want to call them, or, or people on the top of that pyramid, right? Is that they, part of their deal is, is to have a cover story and generally, it's that cover story of the founding of the company, right? Garage, basement, they're all similar. And that cover story also has to have inside of it, from my understanding, is that they have to be philanthropists and charitable foundations. So this is like, again, the Clinton Foundation, all of these things, right? So connect those dots. Okay, so this is her. That's the campus. All right. Now let's get going into. I want to show you that video real quick. I want to show you some of this, um, some of these photos. So this is the observatory. Let's get into some of these pictures here. Okay. Remember, wizards and warlocks. Angel, fish. Satanic sun. Labyrinth. Crow. Wizards Academy. Castle. Uh, and by the way, they probably have a larger picture. I'm going to show you this. That's a wizard. This is the artwork. This is the artwork. All right. Forgot the name of this. I know there's a there is a biblical name for this. I forgot. I don't know what that is. If you know what it is, put it in the comments. Weird stuff, dude. Weird stuff. Stars. Right? Look down here on the floor. Half moon stars. Look at this writing. Look at this writing here. What is that? Okay. Guys, this is uh, creepy. Wouldn't you, th wouldn't you say? History of magic. Okay. The daily bread. What does Satan like to do? Mock God. Okay. It's the observatory. The observatory. Okay. I do not know what this is. But this is on the observatory. This is airbag, airbag, chest parts, head parts, holy outside, holy inside, yellow water holder, lower parts, blood, food bag, blood cleansers, blood, blood pusher. This is what you think with thinking bag. What is going on here? Creepy dude. 
super, super creepy. Okay. So let's go through Alice in Wonderland. For a while now, we've been hearing about how all our medical records are going electronic. So for the record, how exactly does that work? Rather than ask your doctor, ask our Lee Cowan. Let me put this into theater mode for you guys. Sorry. This may not look like the typical setting for a medical software company. Get in a little closer, and that's even more evident. It's as much theme park here as anything. Alice in Wonderland kind of stuff, literally. The workspaces here can be in old railway cars or subway cars, tree houses, and gingerbread houses. Even its employee cafeteria looks like a train depot to a land that storybooks are written about. I walked through and was like, what is this? <laughs> what it is, is the self-described intergalactic headquarters of Epic in the middle of the farm fields of Verona, Wisconsin, just outside Madison. If you've never heard of this place, just ask your doctor, because it's Epic software that handles the private medical records of about 60% of the patients in this country, probably yours. One of the things that strikes me is that Epic has such a big reach mm -hmm. and it really impacts so many people's lives and yet so many people have never heard of Epic. I know. Okay. Just FYI, that's the founder, Lauren Faulkner, or Judy, I'm sorry, Judy Faulkner. And if your eyes are open, that's a man. All right. Now you can, we can go back and forth on that for a long time. That's fine. That's a man. Yes, it's behind the scenes. We haven't advertised. We haven't put out press releases. And I don't know if that was a good thing to do or not. Judy Faulkner is the 76-year-old genius behind Epic, a computer software engineer and admitted nerd who built this curious place in her own curious image. Happy birthday to you. A hint of her personality was revealed last year when, to celebrate Epic's 40th anniversary, she dressed like she was back in the 70s again. Well, here's the skinny man. That's far out. She's a little far out too, far out in front. She not only built a giant tech company from the ground up, but in the process made herself one of the richest self-made women in the world. We have to compete with Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Apple, etc. We get a lot of acceptances because people look around and say, I think I'd like to work here. There are nearly 10,000 employees at Epic who mingle among the artwork. That about doubles the population of Verona. It's a young place, average age, about 26. Peg Horner and Nicholas Bostrom could have worked in sunny Silicon Valley, but they chose to come to wintry Wisconsin instead because they say, is as far as big tech companies go, Epic is doing more than just building phones. We feel like we have an impact to make, and it's something that I actually really value about here. I don't feel like I'm just clocking in and clocking out. You know, we're not here to just grind out on something that's not really doing anything. It's making other people be able to be healthy and happy. It was 1979 when the company started, in a basement. Of course, in a basement. It's like they manufacture these pictures and they just say, you know what, you guys are complete idiots and everything's done in the basement or garage and in the 70s or early 80s. With just two employees, the goal to move patient records from overstuffed dog-eared manila folders to digital records accessible with a click of a mouse. No one had spent much time figuring out just how to get a computer to handle all that data. But... Faulkner always had a way with computers, and she engineered a program herself. I used to like when I was a kid to play with clay and make things out of clay, and I always thought of computer programming as clay of the mind. The first time I did something, and there it was on the screen, it was, wow, it's very creative. In the decades that followed, it grew from the mundane to a system that is now integral to patient care in nearly every major U.S. health system. 
Its ubiquity means that you can now go almost anywhere to be treated, and your medical records will likely follow you there. Here's an example of what my test results look like right from here. Most In fact, you can now check your lab results, time. refill medications, make appointments, even share your medical records right from an Epic app, says engineer Sean Bina. So all of this data was never available in the past, and now you can see it all on the phone. Paper records served us pretty well for centuries, but boy, what a rat's nest of data. In this case, the patient's getting blood drawn, they're going to a surgery visit, they're going to pain clinic, they're going to mammography. Dr. Steve Peters is a pulmonary critical care physician at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. It's the old days I, I don't want to rush back to. He showed us mock-ups of what those old, detailed paper records used to look like and how they used to travel. So the records would go in here. Records from Mayo Clinic patients used to fly around from room to room in those pneumatic tubes. There must have been miles and miles of tubing. Yeah, it's like the arteries inside of the building. It was state-of-the-art in record-keeping at the time. So it does make a certain amount of sense that the Mayo Clinic would end up today being the single biggest client of Epic, spending over a billion dollars over the next several years to integrate its systems. How much is this going to change things? We've been keeping track of the diagnoses of the Mayo Clinic patients since before we had electronic records. But the ability to have it all coming from one source makes it a lot easier. Without good access to data, you really are flying blind. We have them at the head and the foot of the bed. The Mayo Clinic's trauma rooms now have more screens than a Best Buy. Epic's Mallory Hines Roth worked with Dr. Heather Heaton to customize a system that allowed critical patient information to be displayed on those screens all at once. So the data is getting uh, monitored from the patient who's on the table, um, going into their record in the computer, and then being presented up real time. With all that data, though, at your doctor's fingertips, their fingertips can be pretty busy. Too busy, say some. Because of patient privacy, we can't really show you all the data that doctors have to enter on that EPIC system, but some tell us it's too much. And if you've been to your doctor lately, you know it can feel like they spend as much time entering data on a keyboard as they do on you. But Dr. Peters says, get used to it. It's like blaming the word processor for a homework assignment or a student who has to write a term paper. It is where the documentation has to go. The technology isn't the enemy, it's just the reality. That's correct. Epic is, however, working on a solution that would free up your doctor altogether. What are the things that might... Now, this is going to get interesting. Pay attention. If it already isn't freaky enough, check this out. Be coming down the road, I understand, is instead of having to, to key in everything, <laughs> you might sort of have the Alexa of medical records. That is correct. And how would that work? The doctor would just say, hey, Epic, show me Lee's history. And that would come up. And in the end, the doctor would say, hey, Epic, write my note. And the whole note would be written. I know you don't store the data, but I think some people think you probably do. So how do you handle the, the privacy concerns if all of this information is out there floating around? Yeah, um, that is such a good question. I think it always makes sense to be a little bit worried. But I was at a talk once where the man giving the talk held up paper medical records and said it was so easy to put a white coat on, walk into the chart room and pull out any records you wanted and walk out again. Computerization is probably a safer way to do it. Not a perfect way, not 100%, but safer. In a place with a stairway to heaven and an elevator to hell. <laughs> There's no shortage of imagination here. In Just an elevator Medical to hell. Records oh, really sound what's that? Treasure, Cheshire Cat? But here, so, and in Judy Falk, an elevator to hell. Mind, anything to do seems possible. Books. Really, it's technology and software development working together. I'm waiting for the decoder ring to come out. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable. So that's it, you know? And um, so where I wanted to get into on that is, so wh why is this relevant? So this There's is a relevant. certain strain of bacteria called lactobacillus. This is relevant because... 
let's get into the yellow brick road. Well, let's talk about something before we get into the yellow brick road. Let's talk about this is how the satanic evil cabal finds the lineages that they want. Okay. This is what Jesse was saying on the episode with the bishop. So this is they they have all access to this and they have access to your blood. You get a prick when you're born and you're in the database. And whose database are you in? You're in Epic's database. And Epic owns 60% of the medical records in the US. And now it's all digital. Okay. This is how they find their bloodlines. This is how they find the children that they want to take under their wing for and say that nicely, but it's not. So it's the big deal. My dad, and I've got a daughter on the way. Okay. So let's get into the yellow brick road. So this is the Epic user web. So this is the login for your organization. Okay. It took me a minute to figure this out. So basically how I connected that dot here, I knew that we already had wizards and warlocks. Okay. I knew we already had, because I was looking at their campus. Okay. We had wizards and warlocks. Okay, let's go back to that while we talk about it. Okay. We had wizards and warlocks. So we have wizards and warlocks, guys. Okay. Let me show you some images real quick. Okay. So we have Wizards and Warlocks. This is their campus, okay? Wizards and Warlocks. Wizards and Warlocks, okay? So we have Wizards and Warlocks. We have Alice in Wonderland, which you saw at the beginning of that video, okay? And now, where's the Yellow Brick Road? Well, the Yellow Brick Road is right here. So I, I, I know we had the two, and then I came onto this, and I was like, I literally at this point, the lights were like, bing, 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 because I had the 17 alerts open and then I saw the yellow brick road and I was, I literally, I almost lost it. I, I could not believe that all three of these, and I guarantee you more were in there. And what are the chances of that? Come on. We know there's no uh, uh, coincidences. So. Yellow Brick Road, right here. Okay. Follow the Yellow Brick Road. So, still trying to, still trying to go through this in my head. I'm still reeling from yesterday. The, and I've been asking, I've been asking for guidance from God, and 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 um clarity and knowledge and for him to work through me and for me to connect all these dots today that's not you that's not me you know i'd like to think i'm 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 pretty crafty and and uh logical and awake but crazy judy faulkner epic software Wizards and Warlocks. They own 60% of the, they have, oh, well, they have 60% of the US medical records. They have access to all of your information. And we've got Yellow Brick Road. 
Any questions? It gives me like goosebumps thinking about this. Literal goosebumps. Look at all these. Look at all these. I'll put the links in the description. These are all the healthcare healthcare systems. I'm going to go on in episode two. I'm going to go into. I'm going to go into the the reason why there is it, this was built in that town. Apparently, we might lose some of you guys on it. Meaning, it's a little crazy, but it's it's it makes perfect sense to me. They're um, in this town. It's uh, it's basically this just this literally just this entire thing is the t- the campus is like the entire city. And in this town, there's a church there. Okay. And that church apparently is the one of the headquarters or portal areas for these evil cabal folks to kind of go through. So I want to get into that in the second one. I can do, we can do a whole dissection of that. And, and I'm sure we can even get into the layout and the plan. I just I get look at that. That's a pine cone. There's so much stuff in this, man. There is so much stuff in this that it's going to take me a few episodes to dissect. All right, guys. So I just want to give you an update on that. It was a one heck of a couple days here. I'm sure this is something too. I don't know what it is yet. I haven't had time to think about it. But if you know what it is, leave it in the, the comments below. Yeah, this is nuts. This is nuts. Absolutely nuts. So, all right, guys, I'll let you go. Let me go ahead and uh, open this sucker back up. Let me stop that share. All right. So I'll let you guys go. Hope you guys have a great Wednesday. Tomorrow is April 1st. So I've been told or heard there could be some things going on then. I am not too sure. We never know. But I am back on Twitter, which is good. I haven't really done much on there yet. So, and I had the yesterday, the, the, um, the video I uploaded was a little too hot for YouTube. So it is what it is. So I uploaded it to my rumble. You can check that one out. That's a, that's a really good episode, um, to check out. And that's in the, the, you'll see the last episode. It said, um, on the cover, it says new episode in rumble link in description. So go check that out. It's on rumble. I'll put this one on rumble as well. So, all right, guys, you have a great Wednesday and uh, stay frosty.